All right. So hello, Benoit, and nice to have you today in the podcast. So as we talked briefly about, we're going to focus a bit more on like um, who you are. So maybe you can start by introducing yourself in like 30 seconds, who you are, what you do, what brought you there. Yeah, for sure, Charles. So thank you very much for inviting me uh, in Pleasure. your podcast. Yeah, so uh, in 30 seconds, so uh, I'm a... Uh, Uh, I'm, I'm a family man, two kids, yeah. one, uh, an amazing wife, and I'm, a, mm -hmm. I'm an international speaker on a human skill, what we, uh, we call it soft skill, actually, yep. and I'm, I'm teaching as well in that area. It's, uh, it's really my passion. Okay, super interesting. Um, guys, just so you know, um, Benoit actually is the guy that uh, shipped me in a box to Hong Kong uh, four years ago, so... Uh, that kind of kick-started my entrepreneurial journey. I touched back with Benoit a couple of weeks ago on LinkedIn because, I don't know, I was just remembering like all of these great experiences and I wanted to show him my gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. Benoit was in charge at the time um, and I think he still is in part uh, or not, uh, but of sending students in exchange programs mm -hmm. and on my, on my side completely changed my life. Um, it taught me how to uh, travel and work at the same time, to get out of my comfort zone. It made me really a different human being. So Benoit, thank you again for that. And that's basically how I, I got in touch with, um, with You Benoit. had an epiphany moment. And that's where uh, it's so important that you stretch your comfort zone or you step out of your comfort zone, depend on who you are. And usually you, you discover hidden skills you had, hidden yeah. talent you had, just like you discover your hidden skills or your hidden talent or your, yeah. your full potential. Yeah, exactly. And as I mentioned to you, like back in the days, and I guess it's the situation to many students, they um, are stuck up with their parents, you know, like at the, the house and they, they, they kind of are, are looking for a way to get out of there. But I mean, it's, it's kind of hard at this stage of your life. You, you kind of want to part ways with your parents, but you don't have enough money to pay like a, an apartment or something. So, so for me, it was also a game changer on that level. It really allowed me to step back from that environment, which sometimes can be toxic, by the way. Um, and it allowed me, yes, to discover a whole new world, to be more independent and to begin my adult life. So. I guess, I, I guess this was um, a game-changing moment. Do you often get like testimonials like mine from students saying, thank you, Benoit, or? Oh, 100% all the time. And that's why I've been, you know, working there for years because I have a true impact on a human being. Oh, yeah. It changes life. Some did stay in that local country, like in Finland or whatever. I, I have so many stories of people <laughs> like, because of you, I'm now married with a Finnish woman <laughs> in, in Finland. I never went back. I, by the way, I never finished my program, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I, I mean, all of these things because, and I think it's a great way of seeing stepping outside of a comfort zone because yeah. once you're, you, you went back, Charles, to your <laughs> friends, to your family, you had a hard time discussing with them because you were somewhere else, yeah. because you grow, because yeah. what you actually receive as an experience when you were in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. it, 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 it follow you as you, went, as you come back in Montreal, you're like, oh my God, I'm not talking the same language. I yeah. mean, what's going on? You're yeah. not in the same page anymore because you grow where yeah. you didn't, you know, yeah. because they stay the same the same routine for the year you went, you were out. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Where you grow, you were, you were amazed by different stuff that you discover for the first time, new culture and new environment. And more importantly, the most important thing is you discover yourself. Yeah. It's almost like a spiritual experience, to be honest. Like when I remember it, it's, it's a sacred moment of my life. And that's, that's uh, thanks to you in part, you talked about, the comfort zone. Um, what are ways that you and I, uh, obviously we're in different situations. I do want to have kids. I do have a wife. Um, but how do you get yourself out of the comfort zone on a daily basis? Yeah, well, um, a lot of ways, you know, and I, I, I don't like call it, a lot of people will be stressed only by hearing stepping outside of a comfort zone. So <laughs> let's call it oh, stretching. Yeah. Stretching yeah. your comfort zone, a bit uh -huh. like an elastic, you know, you stretch it a bit and a bit and a bit every yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And at a certain time, you know, the elastic will spread out. 
uh, it won't collapse because you stretch it every day. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? So it's the same thing here. So let's let's talk about stretching your comfort zone every day. So I see uh, our conversation with someone like a windows of opportunity of learning something new, of growing. I am amazed by pretty much everything at all time. So I'm always (laughs) stretching my comfort zone in a way of, you know, random meeting like the one we had last time you share some gratitude and what i did i say let's grab a a virtual coffee Mm -hmm. and this for me is no longer a stretching of my comfort zone it's kind of my mentality it's kind of the way i I do things so the more we stretch our comfort zone the more it it becomes our comfort zone yeah that's really what's happening i do agree with that and yes even this podcast you know like as as i was telling you before we start Today I don't feel really good, you know. I have some stomach aches, and I mean, I've, I could have canceled that that meeting, you know. But it, it's not me. It's not like who I am. And to be honest, I enjoy those podcasts. But obviously, there's always the voice, you know, like, hey, what if if you start puking on the podcast? <laughs> what if uh, no, 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 you know? And you gotta silence that voice. Um, I posted like two of my recent out of comfort zone experiences uh, that I think can be useful for the. The listeners here but one was um, back in Cancun like uh, two weeks ago you know there was um, a whatsapp group and people would post like uh, food in there they would sell their services and I don't know why and it, it's weird but I have this this kind of thing you know I've been a digital nomad for like four years and I've been selling my services fully offline and I have this kind of fantasy to sell physically you know like I don't know to go on the street and to sell massages to people and they pay me like 200 pesos so I, I was seeing this group and all those people posting you know uh, their food and stuff so I, I decided to create my little message and and sell my services as a fitness coach and I didn't get any responses but I stretched myself you know my ego was like oh, Charles like why are you posting this in a, a, a Mexican group like they, they won't give you anything and that's shame on you you know you're you're stealing their work and I silenced that voice and even though it, it may sound stupid to many like this is a good example of getting oh, out of your comfort zone 100 person and I'd like to share one very powerful okay. that a lot of people uh you know had lived okay. in the past so I'm gonna ask you a question Charles okay. have you ever jumped to an airplane you know with your parachute have you ever yes. done that in your life and i was scared to death man i thought exactly. I, was, I was going to die because the, the guy was like supporting me in the back like yeah. a baby and i was like i have my life in his hands and i was so scared yeah. man so so here's my is here is the thing about this this is a great example so before you jump you do a training you yeah. you show up with full of confidence but mm-hmm. inside of you you're stressed as hell oh, yeah. and then you get in the airplane and when you get into the airplane you're you're seeking for the spot where you'll be the last to jump you know you don't want to be the first yeah. and all of a sudden that guy who's you know managing the thing saying mm-hmm. charles you're gonna be the first so you so you're about you're at the edge and there's someone behind you and you're extremely stressed full of oh, anxiety yeah. and oh, then yeah. you move on you jump and as you jump something very unique happened because that scare that fear a uh, shift in a in a second into something 100%. different something you never lived before 100%. an amazing feeling and when you arrive on the ground and someone's asking you, huh, how was it, Charles? And you're like, oh, that was one of the most amazing experiences I ever lived. So oh, yeah. behind fear, scare, uh, usually you could find stuff like that. Amazing yes. feeling. So that's a yes. great example. There's this author, I don't know if you know him, Stephen Kotler. Um, he uh, writes about flow states. So flow yeah. state is when you're like really focused and fully into something yeah. a bit like we are right now on this podcast, yeah. you know, um, and there's many ingredients to flow state. And I guess having stress is one of them. You cannot be in a flow state uh, without feeling some pressure, um, whether it is a scarcity, whether it is like time that's, that's going off and yes, like fighting a fear is, is one of the, the greatest uh, trigger to flow state like I cannot tell you like with my silly little example with WhatsApp 
how euphoric I felt after. I'm gonna give you a last example of comfort zone because this one is so good. And I made a, a video on YouTube. It's, it's a bit less silly than the WhatsApp one. So I was in, um, in Bromont, my parents' house not so long ago. Um, and I saw these farmers at the back of my house. Uh, they were chopping wood. And my parents, you know, they were not getting too uh, much along with them. They, some kind of tension, you know, like uh, with COVID yeah. and everything. And they, they, they kept like uh, qualifying them as, as like farmers, you know, like, oh, we are those people and they are other people. And I was like, yeah, no, that's weird. Like, uh, let's, let's have more love here. So th there was, um, it was Saturday, I think, or, or Sunday. And I saw them at the back of my house chopping wood. And I was like, uh, I'm going to go see them. And I'm going to go uh, ask them to help them that if they need any help. So, and, and then the voice starts, you know, Charles, um, it's COVID, you, you cannot like go near anyone. Charles, what if they get angry that you step on their, their property? Uh, Charles, your boots, uh, you'll, they'll get all dirty. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, and, you know, in my head, and that's a good recipe to, to like face your fears, do, do some simple steps. That's how the brain works, you know, and sometimes I like uh, also giving rules to my brain. Marginal gain, marginal yeah. gain, marginal exactly. gain. The less you go, the shorter, the better. Um, and, you know, you, you're talking about state of flow. Yeah. Um, you got to connect with two, two things in order okay. to be in a state of flow. The first okay. thing is your purpose. If yes. it's linked with your purpose, humanize my society in my case. That's why I talk to you right now, because yeah. maybe someone's going to pick something out of that. Yeah. So purpose, your sense of purpose, if it's linked with that, and if it's linked with pleasure as well. So if you, if you, if you connect with your sense of purpose and pleasure, you're in a state of flow. Yeah, I 100% I agree to that. Like before we started the conversation, I told you about like the the chip, the, the thing that I want to make, and you could see the, the light in my eyes, right? That's, that's like my purpose. I want to add value yeah. to the world and I, I want to derive great fun out of that. Like, anyway, we'll, we'll get back to that. But uh, point is with, with those uh, two guys, um, I made a list in my head and I, I like to call that craft dinner box um, <laughs> because it's like one, two, three. So that list was one, put your boots, two, put your coat, three, open the door and walk outside. Four, keep walking. Five, once I was in front of them, I, I asked them, do you need help? And they first told me no. Then step five was like, stay there, you know? Because it was easy to just say, okay, and just go back, you know? But I, as awkward as it was, I stayed there. And like, they, they weren't too like friendly at the beginning, but at the end I, I helped them. And I chopped wood for two hours and I did my workouts while chopping wood. And I don't know if you ever chopped wood, Benoit? Oh, no, man. No, but uh, it's, no, but it's maybe amazing. I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I've got to try that as I hear you now. <laughs> you, you need to try this. It's a it's a spiritual experience. It's like being a ninja. It's like it's like connecting to your your, your very um, origins, because as Canadians, as Quebecers, we chopped a lot of woods back in the days, you know, um, yeah. and I, I came back from that experience completely uh flow in, in a flow state and like a different person and the coolest thing about that is that you create the habit of getting out of your comfort zone oh yeah, Th yeah. that's a that's kind of a mindset to be really honest and that's why i'm always excited to try something new yeah. um and it's a mindset really it really is so so like how how do you well i i would guess that you have a lot of probably those invitations or those conversations per day. Do you have any more tips to get out of your comfort zone and create that habit? Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, you got to understand a uh, principle, the, which one, uh, which uh, the, you actually already explained that is mm -hmm. if you want to start something, uh, you got to start in a very small way, you know, in a very tiny way, in a very short way. The shorter, the better. You want yeah. to start reading more, you know, yeah. stepping outside of your comfort zone and reading mm -hmm. new stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, start by scheduling that new stuff in your calendar and the shorter, the better. Sometimes mm -hmm. I say, just open the book and close it and do it again tomorrow. It's crazy, exactly. isn't it? But I really think it works. Uh, yes. I, I start my day with uh, 30 push up every day. And That's then good. a pattern is going to be implemented without knowing. And like you said, 
at a certain point, uh, your your outside of your comfort zone will be your comfort zone. Exactly. You will hate your comfort zone. Yeah. You will hate routine. Yeah. You will hate all of these things because you see uh, stepping outside of your comfort zone as a growing opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and you know when you step outside of your comfort zone, you discover many things. First, you fail. First, you fail means usually you learn. Second thing is you discover hidden skills, hidden talent. I got to say that because that this is exactly how I become a professional international speaker. Sure. I, uh, I had an opportunity where someone uh, had to hire a speaker. He let him down. And two days before, he said, you got to save my life. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's up? He says, would you replace that speaker? I was like, what are you talking about? You know, I never did that before. And my wife, and that's why it's important to be surrounded by great people. She mm -hmm. said, you can do it. And I did it. And then after the talk, people were like, can you do this in my company? I was like, yeah, for sure. And it started like that. So I discovered a hidden skill I had that I didn't know I had. Stretching your comfort zone is helpful for that as well. And also for finding amazing opportunity, Charles. Mm. Like, you Definitely. never know. Definitely. And that's that's super interesting, you know, public speaking. I remember, uh, you know, and you probably do too, like when we were delivering presentations at, at like uh, primary school, uh, elementary school, and even high school. I, I don't know about you, but I, I was quite nervous. I've always been like probably eight on 10, uh, but I remember feeling this humongous stress and there's no greater moments of this little voice coming out than those moments in which like you were at high school and knowing how important it was your image, you know, in front of your peers in yeah. high school. Uh, oh man, uh, the, the lady that, um, that I have a crush on, she's, she's gonna laugh about me. And oh, my friend, he's looking at me, he's gonna laugh about me. And we were so insecure and public speaking is one of the greatest ways to put yourself outside of your comfort zone. And um, I remember seeing you uh, speak at university, like uh, for the exchange programs and you were pretty good already at that time. That was already like five or, or six years ago, I think. Did you start practicing public speaking um, at that time before that? No, when I never that? really practiced, uh, Charles. I think it was already, it was an eight or I don't know how, but I mean, I just, felt like I, I am able to communicate with my energy with it's kind of a dance that I understand okay. I, I cannot mean. dance with my wife you know <laughs> but I can dance with the way I, I speak okay. uh, and I, I know exactly when Charles uh, I need to stop with you answering the question and move on and when keep going I, mm -hmm. I have that kind of uh, understanding mm -hmm. and the energy and putting some silence in it's mm -hmm. really it I mean I never really practice it a lot of people ask me have you done Toastmaster this and that I never mm -hmm. did I mean I never done anything I just practice uh, as I do it that's it yeah. I remember going to those Toastmasters meeting when I was at university I think and I always thought like man how am I going to get there but yeah I guess it's it's just like it's not practicing, but it's just doing it and becomes a habit. And the more you read, the more vocabulary you have in your head, the more uh, knowledge you have in your head, the, the more you can branch out, the more you can adapt. Um, and the more you can, the more you can focus to you, not what's in my head. You understand what I mean? This is yeah. something very interesting as well. Uh, people are not aware of their surrounding because they're so concentrate about what they're about to say. Mm -hmm. where when it flow more naturally because you know exactly what you're about to say mm -hmm. you're able to adapt to your new context and focus on them not you uh, yeah. so it's really interesting as well uh, and yeah speaking is very in but i i must say you know i was extremely passionate charles about soccer i was okay. my dream was to becoming a professional soccer player mm -hmm. uh, and i lack talent Sure. And that's why I make it a note. I, I, I did transform that as a hobby instead of a profit uh, of, of a career where sure. I never had a talent. Of, I, I never knew I had a talent about communication, but a lot of people were talking about that and they were like, you're very good. And I was like, OK, I didn't I didn't have a passion at that time, but I, I surely had a talent. And then mm -hmm. I transformed this into a passion and then into a career. So what mm -hmm. I mean here is. We should try to focus more about our talent. Passion is important, don't get me wrong, 
But if you lack talent, you know, a lot of people try asking me, like, I'd like to be a speaker. And I'm like, mm, I'm not sure it's going to work because mm -hmm. you could work your ass off on that. But mm, I mean, some has it more naturally. I need correct. to work my ass off every day, Charles. Correct, correct. But I have a kind of natural talent in that where in soccer, I had none. Yeah, I was yeah. really fighting and working hard. So yeah. it's hard. I, I just think it's, in it's, professional it's important. Sports, you know? Yeah, it's just important to understand the difference between talent and passion. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what Ikigai is? Probably. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's like what you love, what the world needs, uh, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. And I believe that that people exactly. should should follow like that direction way more. But I got, I got a question for you. Um, I'm, I'm an athlete myself. I, I completed an Ironman a year ago and learned so much lessons from it. What did you learn um, as like life lessons, business lessons from your sports career? Well, it, it, it end before it start, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually did try, uh, did a lot of tryout everywhere, Morocco, okay. Tunisia, Portugal. What I learned is that um, resilience is a great tool because I never really fail. I learn my true passion because I was mixed with people from different cultures everywhere. I was the only one French Canadian, you know, yeah. in the team. Yeah. So I, I felt in love with the human surrounding okay. me, with the people from different culture. And I was going to their home and, and you know, uh, eating these amazing food and understanding their language and their roots and the way they think and this and that. And it nourished my curiosity about pretty much anything at all time. It was my spark. So even though I was there for soccer, I went back with something way bigger, which was understanding that everybody seems the same, but they're all different. And I have something unique to offer to this world. And I make that journey as mine to mm -hmm. tap in the full potential of each of the person I met. That's mm -hmm. kind of my journey. Kind of interesting. What would the actual Ben say to the Ben at this time as a father? Yeah. Well, good question. And, you know, there's one question you're going to ask me um, about my value, Yeah. Uh, you know, and my value uh, before uh, thinking about it, like just in, uh, in, instinctively, uh, mm -hmm. I was thinking about my, my value, my, my most important value was family. Okay. And then uh, I discovered I was lying to myself because... Um, I was flying, I was traveling everywhere, and I was pretending that my family was the most important thing, mm -hmm. but I was not acting in that sense. Okay. And all of a sudden, I was in Chad, the middle of Africa, and one CEO says to me, are you sure that family is your true value that define mm -hmm. you? Because now you're going to Thailand after here and this death, and you have a little son at home that's waiting for you. You know, he's going to grow up very fast. I said, well, mm -hmm. I need that money. He, he stared at me and said, do you really need all that money? I said, like, no, I don't need that. <laughs> and, and that's all. I actually had an epiphany moment. Okay. And I went back to what's my core value. And okay. I, I found out that accountability, mm -hmm. accountability is my true value that I breathe every day. Okay. It, it's here on my forehead. Because I need to be accountable with you right now. Mm -hmm. I need to be accountable with my, my wife, with my yeah. kids. Yeah. We, when I'm talking, I need to be accountable. So mm -hmm. it, it's that, you know, value, that deep value that give me the chance to say no or yes to something. Oh, yeah. for sure, I'm going to go to China for a talk, but you're going to have to bring my wife and kids with okay. me. Okay. You understand what I mean? So yeah. I feel better about myself since I discover what I breathe. Family is kind of another value important, but the one that defined me is accountability. So okay. the first thing uh, I would say to Ben 20 years ago is, yeah, mm -hmm. like, just make sure you know your value. Okay. Just make sure you breathe your value. And okay. I didn't do that mm -hmm. for, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Can you explain more on... I thought that the connection was lagging there. No, um, no. <laughs> can you explain more on accountability? What what does it precisely mean to you? Because for me, accountability is to put others accountable so that they can reach their highest. 
and same for, for myself to hold me accountable. If I have that meeting, I need to attend that meeting. What does that mean to you? Exactly. So what it means is that if you invite me for a podcast and you invite me, you ask question and I don't really answer, I'm not well prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not your mistake, it's mine. If I'm, um, if I'm uh, not a good, uh, if, if with my wife is not going good, it's not about mm -hmm. her, it's about me. What can I do to, you know, improve the situation? The same with my kids. If I, I in 20 years, uh, we don't have a good relationship. Well, mm -hmm. maybe I didn't build the foundation needed. I didn't spend the time needed. The same yeah. thing when you hire me for a talk. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not well prepared and I deliver the talk and it's not going well, well, it's my because The crowd was awful. It's never about the crowd. It's about me being accountable. So I breathe that everywhere. So I'm able to say, I'm sorry, Charles, I can make it my, my family no more, whatever. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? So yeah. everything I do, I just wrote a book. I'm accountable yeah. for that book. If it's mm -hmm. not a good book, uh, well, it's my mistake. It's my, it's my responsibility. It's not a reader's responsibility. So it's really changed the whole thing when I, I focus on thinking about what's my true value. And I saw that when I breathe that value, it connects with all of the other value that is important for me. Yeah, yeah. Naturally, it mm -hmm. connects with them. It's interesting. Do you have something coming up? Do you have another meeting? No. I'm good. Okay, okay. Because okay. I, I want to start wrapping this up because, uh, yeah, we planned 30 minutes for that. Um, I wanted to ask like two more questions, starting with the first. What does work life balance mean to you? Do you think it's a thing? Do you think it's achievable? Because obviously, like me, I want to be the best at everything. I, and I know that, that this is impossible, but I want to be the best father, want to be the best husband, want to be the best in my work. Um, what does work-life balance mean to you? And is it a thing? Is it really a thing? I don't think so. Okay. I, don't, I, I don't think we can find a balance. Uh, I, I think we can, um, you know, take a lot on us to find a balance means like, I want to stop at 5 or 4.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. every day or almost every day to be fully with my kids. Okay. So what I'm doing is sometimes I take it on me because I didn't finish all of my emails. So I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. the very next day okay. to, you know, have that liberty of growing in my company and growing with my kids. You understand mm -hmm. what I mean? So I take on me at 5 a.m. So I'm not stressed at 5 p.m. the day before that I, I need these. I need to do these email and this and that. And I'm not fully with my kids. So I'm not doing both properly. So I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to wake up tomorrow at 5 a.m. It's going to be my true liberty, the okay. freedom of my liberty, because I'm going to be fully with my kids. Mm -hmm. And then I offer myself with my self-discipline. I wake up at five because I want to, I want to grow as well in my company. So mm -hmm. I don't think we can find a balance. I need, we mm -hmm. take, if, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to, whatever you're going to do in life, if you have a big goal, big objective, you have to offer yourself the freedom mm -hmm. of your liberty, which is self-discipline. Yeah. I've wrote a book uh, during the pandemic from the yeah. month of March until late August. Mm -hmm. My true liberty was to wake up at 5 a.m. every day from Monday to Sunday. No, except, mm -hmm. no exception. And this is something I'm proud of, of, of now because I did it. You understand what I mean? I had it's all huge. of the reason to not doing it. So yeah. I don't think it, there's such a thing of finding a balance. Mm. Discipline you know. is equal to freedom, Jocko Willing. Did you read that book, Extreme Ownership? No. That's a no, good one. He's a Navy oh, really? SEAL. Yeah, Navy SEAL, like um, crazy discipline guy um, and smart, you know. Uh, he's a leadership coach, really good. Now that I can refer, have you read uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins? Yeah, this are, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one absolutely. of my favorite books. And, you know, like when I was training for my Iron Man, I, used to bring my, my phone right here and there would be a Goggin screaming at me to, to continue and to not give up. I love that. But let's go, let's go a bit deeper in that thing is yeah. self-discipline uh, self uh, self discipline equals mm -hmm. self-love. This is very important to understand. Agreed. A lot of entrepreneurs are very self-disciplined in their work, but they're, they're, they, they are no, uh, no, there's no discipline whatsoever when it comes up with their you know, uh, mental and uh, physical health. Yep. So yep. self-discipline equals self-love, which means it's a 360 approach. It's not only yes. at work. That's very important. I do agree with that. And well, 
I mean, I believe in, in balance in some shape or form, um, you know, like the, the wheel of life with relationship, business, spirituality, mindset, knowledge, um, lifestyle and contribution. And I probably, yeah, uh, which one did I forget here? But anyway, there's like those life areas. I think there's eight, but I, I highly uh, subscribe to the philosophy of giving attention and time to each of those areas because if you're not good at it, and same goes with the opposite, if you're not good at relationships, um, you will not be good at business too because business is about relationship. If you're and really good, that, yeah. It's the power of selling without selling. <laughs> yeah, I read that on your <laughs> link. We'll talk on that. The power of selling without selling. Yeah. This is that. Relation is all about that, you know? So I love that, yeah. And what was it's your second EQ. question? Because I know we need to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's EQ. And like, I had just the last follow-up question on that question. Like, do you usually wake up at 5 a.m. and how many hours of sleep do you get? Yeah, I'm very bad with... This is really my blind spot right now. You know, the Habs was playing yesterday and yeah. I was like, I Did need they win? to watch the game. They won, but very late, you know? So yeah. um, so I wake up still at 6 a.m. Usually my sweet spot is 6 a.m. So I don't sleep a lot. Okay. Uh, and this is something I need to work on um, mm -hmm. to be full, uh, to tap in my full potential. Uh, yeah. But I, I think one of my strengths is my self-discipline. Okay. Uh, I'm very, very good at it. But one of my blind spot, Charles, and maybe you could help me on that, is I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm a freelancer. And this is really bad because a freelancer, when you sleep, you don't make money. Mm -hmm. The only money I make when I sleep is when you buy my book. So <laughs> it's really, you know, it, it's, it's not it's a, a big entrepreneur. Start. It's a good start. But when I, when I, what I want to say is I need to build an architect behind me, an architect right. about everything I do. Because otherwise, when they hire me, they pay me, and that's it. And when I say, well, I cannot, because I've already another talk, would you like my, uh, my friend Charles, a great speaker, and say, no, we want you. That, it's a freelancer I am. So I need Correct. to shift, and it's very difficult. You know what? Like one tip for that, um, and I think you'll be great at it, it's values, it's culture. Um, how you influence people, it's by being different and talking about values and not money, because that was my next question, money. Um, what, what basically is enough money, you know? And like, I reflect a lot nowadays on, on this, this whole thing, you know, business and, and all of that. And I view business as a lifestyle and yeah, obviously it makes some money and we live in a capitalist system. We need money to, to live. But I view business as an art form and a way to accomplish myself. So like the, the, tip, the tip for you would be to, yeah, actually first like build some, some guides, you know, some, some systems that people can follow. And I think you'll be great at it because my number one tip for that is always staying true to your values and humans respect that. And when you make them um, feel that like they are important and not just the money side of things and when you're different and funky like you are um mm -hmm. they they start understanding that hey this is more like than a nine to five and if you give them opportunities then uh, they they will work while, while you sleep and they will make things happen while you sleep like my team right now um but I have, I have this follow-up question for you so that we can wrap this up because we could talk forever. <laughs> you and I, you and I are, are big talkers. Um, in terms of money, like, yes, you have family as um, one of your top priorities, but how much, how much money is enough money? And how, how, do you, how do you view money? And what are your, your objectives in terms of money? So there, there's many questions in there. I'll just let you go however you want to so, take so that So here's point. one thing is I live below my means. Okay. Uh, will, this is a first golden rules. Okay. I'm someone that uh, uh, being uh, grabbing a picnic like I'm going to grab with my son later on is price things. I, I'm not really excited about that. So for, for me, money, I see this, you know, I'm living in a bungalow. I could live in a big castle. I, I win a good, you know, good, good life. I have a good life. 
but I'm going to stick here because I'm, I feel good here. I don't okay. need more. That's what I meant. Okay. Um, but I see money as a, as, as, a, as a tool to have more impact on more people. That's how I see it. Okay. That's how I see it. I see money as a tool to help more people and having an impact on more people. That's it. Because I don't need more money, to be honest. Okay. And I don't for, need more money, but I need more money to have a greater impact on more people. Correct. And for that to happen, like you, your next goal, your next big objective, I would guess, would be to create that business that can function without Ben being exactly. there, right? Exactly. Okay. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in a place called freelancer. Yeah. It's good. Good money. 95% but, of people are, are like, well, that's a bit too, but my dad's like that. I, I would say 99%, 99%. Really? 99% of the people don't see the boat. They okay. don't see what they could build. They don't see the architect. It's because okay. of people like you, Charles, and people, other people that I'm surrounded with that I'm able to think about that. Okay. Even, just the simple fact of thinking about that, not even like doing it, but just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Because now mm -hmm. I see a boat. Where usually people don't have in their surrounding people that say, wait a minute, you're missing the boat. You're missing mm. the old thing. Mm. When you, you're sleeping, you don't get money. Come on. You, you mm. got to think yeah. overhead. Like, and that's why I, I love to, to have a chit chat with you. It that's, pushed me. That's why SAS is to... also like cool, you know, like because me on my side, I, I, I cannot say that I'm on top of the world either. I have an agency. I trade people's time for money. I am the middleman between my team and the clients. So mm -hmm. that model is, is cool. And you know what? I Obviously, I do it for money, but I also do it for data. I can get a lot of data on what works and what doesn't, which is why I'll never let go probably of this agency and why I'm constantly thinking about SaaS and I'll probably build this SaaS pretty soon. Um, but hey, we will uh, we will like follow up like on, on this. I, I have like still many tips for you. Like you'd be great at managing international workforce that doesn't cost so much, you know, on Upwork, for example, uh, to start yeah. building your team, you know, and uh, we can talk also the, about oh, the products. Sure. Yeah. Um, but hey, Ben, it was, it was so nice to talk to you. Um, and I've gained energy from that. Maybe it's a team, maybe it's a conversation, but um, likewise, I, I'm back. I'm back on track again, uh, ready to go on with, uh, with the rest of my day. Uh, ahead. wishing you like a rest, uh, a rest of your, a great rest of your day too. And, uh, we'll be in touch for the next. Okay. For sure. Thanks. Charles. Right. Bye amigo.